Welcome to Financial Accounting, presented by Professor Aldridge and yours truly, Bean Counters, Dave Marshall. A sincere thank you goes to Professor Aldridge for allowing me to pre present his excellent lecture series on financial accounting. The lectures break accounting down into small and easily digestible bites. Buckle up and enjoy the ride. The third step in the accounting cycle is posting transactions from the journal to the ledger. This is a process of copying data from the journal to the ledger, which in accounting we show as the T account. Recall that debits are always on the left and credits are always on the right. The process of posting is fairly straightforward. In fact, I would suggest that you don't overthink the process. Uh, it starts with identifying the debit account and the amount from the journal. Then find that account in the ledger. Record the amount as a debit or on the left side of the account. Then do the same thing for the credit account. Identify the credit account and amount. Find that account in the ledger. And finally, record the amount as a credit or on the right side of the account. Let's look at this example. We have a journal entry where we've debited accounts receivable for $2,000 and credited sales revenue for $2,000. The date is January 5th. In the ledger, we will need to find the accounts receivable account and the sales revenue account. Then identify the debit account, which is accounts receivable. The amount of the debit, $2,000. So in the ledger for accounts receivable, we will post or record $2,000 to the debit side, like this. Make sure to include the date or some reference to the journal transaction. Now let's post the credit. Identify the credit account, which in this case is service revenue, the amount of the credit, $2,000, so in the ledger for service revenue, we will record or post $2,000 to the credit side, like this. And don't forget the date. So now you can see that the amounts from the journal have been posted in the ledger. The importance of this step is to make sure that all similar transactions are recorded in the same place. If you were an accountant for this company and you wanted to know how much service revenue your company had for a month, without this step, you would have to go through every single journal entry in the general journal looking for those that affected revenue. That would be uh, quite time consuming even for the smallest of businesses. Okay, let's look at the three previous examples and uh, put, them in, uh, put this step in context of the accounting cycle. In this example, a company bought supplies for $500 on account. The date was August 3rd. So we analyzed the transaction and we journalized it like this. Now we need to post this to the ledger. Supplies is the debit account and the amount is $500. So we post $500 and the date to the debit side of the supplies account. Accounts payable is the credit account and the amount is also $500. So we post $500 and the date to the credit side of accounts of the accounts payable account. In this next example, uh, a company performs service on account for $2,500. The date is August 9th. Accounts receivable is the debit account and the amount is $2,500. So we post $2,500 and the date to the debit side of accounts receivable. The service, uh, excuse me, service revenue is the credit account and the amount is $2,500. So we post $2,500 and the date to the credit side of service revenue. In this final example, a company pays a utility bill for $200. The date is uh, August uh, 15th. Utilities expense is the debit account and the amount is $200. So we post $200 and the date to the debit side of the utilities expense account. Cash is the credit account, and the amount is 
So we post $200 and the date to the credit side of the cash account. Finally, let me add that these first three steps of the accounting cycle are repeated over and over again during the month. The remainder of the accounting cycle all happens at the end of the month, but more on that in future videos.